problem. Fear that plots are seen as rich pickings by developers. TV gardener Danny Clark had been to meet green-fingered campaigners in Gloucestershire facing eviction. It's the unlikely front line in the battle for land. We're just guardians of this place for future generations. And we're not going anywhere. These gardeners are the unlucky warriors. You warned all you the lot of people after that. They're after your plot. I've come to Gloucestershire to a place that some locals say is the oldest allotment site in the country. Good morning, Norman. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning mate. Good morning, How are you? <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely piece of paradise you've got here. Oh, well, welcome to Coombe. It, it is. It is. Absolutely super. As I walked up here, I noticed um, quite a few signs. What's that about? Well, that took us by surprise on March 26, when 6 o'clock in the morning, they all got staked into the allotments, and it gave us a year's eviction notice. You're in the middle of Greenfield, says. So anywhere else you could have an allotment. We've been in touch with all of the other owners of the land to see if anybody else is willing to let us have a patch. And so far, absolutely nobody wants to part with any any parcel of their land. So if you lose this, you've got nowhere else to go. We've got nowhere else to go. I really love these allotments. I'm so envious of these guys. But the thing is, you know, land is at a premium and there is a housing shortage. And places like this are being squeezed. Across the region, at least 64 council and allotments have been closed down in the last 20 years. No one knows how many privately owned sites like Coombe have shut. The issue has divided this small village. The landowner, Susan Ballinger, wasn't available for interview, but she said she'd given the allotment holders a year's grace to find other arrangements. And they all had their own gardens where they could grow vegetables. What have you got from the allotment, Maggie? Some potatoes, which I surprisingly found, and right. some Jerusalem architecture. Oh, that sounds lovely. And you're going to make soup for me, are you? No. Maggie Butt used to look after her plot with her husband, John, who died a few years ago. So this is where you live then, Maggie? This is what we bought. But as I said to you, my husband wouldn't have bought this if we hadn't had the allotment because the garden is so small, as you can see. So, Maggie, what would you miss most about the allotments? Going out and picking lovely fresh product, bringing them down, putting them in the pot. But also, I miss morning the companionships that my husband and I had. Uh, he and I used to do the allotment together. And he used to do most of the heavy work, and I used to go for it. So I would go for this and make the tea and go for that and make the coffee. He bossed you around, did he? A little bit, but I mean, you know, we were a good partnership. So what would losing the allotments mean to you, Maggie? So much. Uh, for me, not only me, but for my family. But mostly because uh, John always wanted to be buried there. He wanted to go into his congress, which we used to laugh at when he used to say it. But in fact, what he was saying also was that he wanted to put back into the soil what he'd taken out over the 44 years that we'd been here. But uh, it, I can't do it unless it belongs to us, or the allotment, and it will always be allotments. I mean, there's quite a bit of land here, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking you get quite a few houses on here. Some people say that's a lot more important than allotments. I mean, what do you say to that? Well, I guess we could be accused of uh, nimbyism, that uh, these allotments have been around a long time. They provide a lot of physical, social uh, well-being for a lot of people. It's the only facility we've got. So we, we really will do everything we possibly can to make sure that it stays as allotments rather than going for building purposes. The landowner says she's acting within her rights to take possession of her own property and that there are allotments available in the nearby town. But plot holder Martin Clark says that's not a good solution. We don't want to leave our allotments and get into a car and drive off to another allotment miles away. Martin started a social media campaign the day they heard the allotments were closing. I knew there was pressure on the allotments, but I had no idea about the scale. And um, just by opening ourselves up to linking with other groups, I would say within two days, we were absolutely bombarded with messages of support, sympathy. 
one high-profile campaign was in Bristol, where protesters took to the trees to try and stop the new metro bus route being built over part of Stapleton allotments. 41 out of the 108 allotments have now been closed to make way for the building. Hi. Hello, Jane. How are you? I'm fine. Including the plot that belonged to Jane Gosh. They have made some improvements. I mean, we've, we've, we've now got a nice road going along here. We've got a meeting house. We've got some disabled plots. We've got a proper toilet. But that doesn't compensate for the rape of the countryside. I can see you're very upset. About very it. upset. My mother gardened here for... 30, 40 years. This is the first time I've been up to my old plot since they got us out. And it's very painful. Very painful, very painful yeah. They've taken down all our, our old hut. They've trashed my mum's roses. Nothing left. Nothing left. And soon be under concrete. Can't believe it. I've just not wanted to come up here. You know, the battle's over now. It's no good fighting it anymore. They wouldn't listen when they had the chance to listen. And, um, you know, we just have to make the best of it now in the new plot. According to Bristol Council, most of the allotments that's closed down in recent years have been derelict. When they sell plots that are in use, like Jones, by law they have to provide an alternative site nearby. So this is my new plot here. This is it here, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Jane has a replacement plot and compensation from the council. Councils are under pressure to build roads and to build houses. Some people say that you're very lucky to get this plot. Well, we are lucky that, that we had our plot um, uh, replaced, but that was only what the law states. So I think they've done a, a, a really silly thing here, and I think that future generations will live to regret it, because once really good agricultural soil is lost, it's lost forever. You won't get it back. So I think anybody with allotments where there is demand for housing are in severe peril of losing their allotments. So be warned all you allotmenters out there. Be prepared. <laughs> They're after your plot. Back in Coombe is the local council that campaigners are looking to for help. The hope in the council will see the value of the allotments to the community and buy the site from the landowner. Otherwise, it'll close in a few weeks. Just come back from Bristol, and, um, you know, they're not too happy there. But they have got somewhere to garden. Is there anything here the council will do to help you? We've had terrific support from uh, the local town council, from Stroud Council, and uh, it is a community asset that we are determined to perpetuate as long as we possibly can. We're just guardians of this place for future generations and we're not going anywhere yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been really struck by the strong connection people feel with these small plots of land but the landowner here says she's perfectly within her rights to sell her private property allotments across the west could increasingly come under threat as the housing shortage bites in this small village they're digging in for a tough fight well, that's it for tonight. There's plenty more on Facebook and Twitter. But from here in Marlborough, thanks for watching. Good night. Next week, an inside track on the controversial street patrol and why they've been suspended. We're not vigilantes. We kind of put ourselves out there and we're joining the ebb and flow of nighttime community with it.